six thirty, we're calling a select board meeting to order. First agenda item is to consider addition addition or adjustments to the agenda. Are there okay. any additions? Um two if possible can we address uh within the board that letter to the board. Um, library funding um we're gonna have to I'll let both have it for support from the state's long term recovery team or the inner agency recovery, the IRC. Um, and then the second is to uh, apply for the SWIFT current grant for the town fiscal building and what's. Okay, any others? I really, I don't even know if it needs to be. Little agenda item though, I want to just acknowledge that Green Up Day is May 4th, which is the way to do this whole meeting. I would like to just have Tom and Jason and Shane do what needs to be done to make Green Up Day happen. I don't know if we need anything yeah. in regard to that as a motion. In the past, we never have. Yeah. It's been the Green Update Coordinator, yeah, Public right. Works has supported it. So I'm just I'm just acknowledging that it's happening and if everybody's fine with letting it go. Um yeah, I, I think it would be able hands and we should just make Yeah, it I don't remember her voting. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to add because I don't think that's on the agenda the delegation of the cannabis control or do you want to say that to me? Well, I don't think we need to say that. Under new item 13, uh, just to get the board's wishes. Does that have to be an executive session? Mm -hmm. Nope. You say 11.5. 11.5. 25. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have the Swift Grand Grand under 11. Push 12 down to 13. So, okay. Yeah. All right. If there's no other additions or adjustments to the agenda, we'll move on to our next item. Uh, <clears throat> reviewing invoices and orders is going to happen throughout the meeting. So, uh, are there any select board issues or concerns? How do you actually do that properly by conducting a meeting? You know, one time we had discussed it. we can devote like 15 minutes of whatever to actually look and use all of a little closer. You don't really get a chance to really uh, when you conduct a meeting. Anybody else have an opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, we've never found any correction in the years I've been doing it. So I, I think it's a waste of our time to spend 15 minutes times six. At the beginning of the well, time. maybe if we'd done that uh, several years ago, we would have kind of got to the bottom of something that was going on before it happened. I totally understand that. Right. Um, but there's other ways to get to the bottom of it. The purchase order. Yeah. Now, now we're going to discuss that tonight. Yeah, and it'll be part of that. The, that to me is the retention of the bottom or something like that. Versus, I got you. We have never we, um, found a correction. There's been questions, several questions, some that aren't answered. We could request a rule, right? Eventually, something to the board. Prior to the meeting, if possible, uh, with any highlights. Yeah, that's what the board wants. Last year, we kind of reverted to not taking 15 minutes every meeting. Yeah, because it was there at one time. It was. So, mm -hmm. after our purchasing policy potential changes, maybe we will go back to that. But okay. We can burn it out. At least I want to be on record that I was interested in this. Yep. Any other select board issues or concerns? Did other select board members see the email about the ATV? Yes, I wrote my phone and I responded. You responded to a town email. I was very surprised. Yeah. Oh, I, did, I did too, but hold it. Yeah. That's good. I replied, to, I replied to all the light of fire under the other. <laughs> yes, yes, I think we will. Can't make this stuff up. Yeah, it was actually well, kind of pleasing to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, they're fine. So we can do it. 
You know, there's no reason for anybody. Well, he's had to, I, I just don't know what the ordinance. I just don't know what it finds. The ordinance was not defined for a second, third offense. Not his. I don't know. The person sent the email to Jennifer. Right. Did you see the pictures? That she sent? I did, but I don't, I, I don't know everybody. <laughs> I knew everybody that already. Okay. I'll, I'll do my best to not let you down next time. There are a lot of people that ride ATGs who are not with guns. <clears throat> but there's no reason for somebody to speak to a woman the way that's going to be. No, certainly not. Right. Okay. Are you good? I'm peaceful. All right. Duncan, you're the only one without an issue and a concern tonight. That is not right. Come on, Duncan. Do I think of someone? I can't help out my head. So, group selfishness. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll yeah. make a lot of townspeople very happy, don't you? What's that? You'll make a lot of townspeople very happy. <laughs> but I know that the issue we're in. Our next item is a letter of intent for grants and aid. We'll go out for next time. There's a motion on the floor. Second. Okay. Motion, a second, a third. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, review and act on funding opportunity for the market. Now, I do believe that there was, does that make it a packet? Somehow, um, that's a, it's like its own separate packet of a bunch of stuff. Um, did everybody get a chance to read the email that I sent out? That's the current grant. Yes. So the front of the like the wrong group. No, that, that is not the market. I might say that you spent a lot of time doing that kind of stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the industrial part. That's industrial part. Okay, that's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very important to have. Can we actually tie the same one with the town foot current right? Uh I think that's slightly different from a town perspective. Okay. But we could move the town foot current grant up to that Um what are the select board's wishes on you have to read that email? So my my ask in that email, my ask to the board, I guess, is that to authorize the town through Randall to submit an application, Randall and or Tom, <clears throat> uh, to submit an application before the April 30th deadline. The Vermont Emergency Management folks said they would assist with the development of that application. I do believe that we need something, something to start. We we do. I have communicated with Scott. Scott has agreed to have me um, provide his contact information to Brian Waxler. Um, so the, the thing that we need from Scott is as the floodplain zoning administrator is a determination of substantial damage. And he needs to communicate with Carlo to basically it's it's 51% yeah. damage. And so that that's a requirement. The other thing that's going to be a requirement and was very much up in the air in this discussion was whether or not of Carmel's dry flood proofing proposal will meet the National Flood Insurance Program standards for dry flood proofing. So that's the big elephant in the room. If it does. Then the application can go forward, and I would say there's a high likelihood of being approved. PFACs, it's a 100% grant, 100% opportunity. There's no, no cost share. The town has no cost share. The town, whoever administers that, would also have a 5% project cost admin fee available. So a million dollar project package could be made. Right. Um, so I just don't see any downside to submitting the application. The worst case is you can withdraw the application anytime you want, 
Um, if it, if the dry flood proofing method doesn't work, FEMA's going to say so at the outset, and it's a pull well, down different. Get down different. So I think so. I think there are three asks that I would have. One is the is the town willing to submit a grant because we would we would be the responsible entity. Would be a pass through. So final associates would be a sub recipient of the grant, but the grant and the grant admin and grant management responsibilities would be out of town. Again, there's the five percent of project costs. The yeah, that's the you envision Randall. That's part of my third ask. He's shaking his head yes. <laughs> yes, and Randall said yes. He thought he could get the grant um, submitted. Um, especially if EEM helps. Um, the question of grant management after, if the grant goes through and gets approved, I think is a, a question that I'm not asking us to decide on tonight. It's really submitting the application. If we do get approved, then the question of grant administration, grant management absolutely needs to be discussed. You know, I think Graham can probably do it, um, but I think you know, as a backup, we should at least ask LCPC if they have the administrative capacity to do it. By all yeah. means, no problem. Yeah. It might be good if the LCPC can do it. I mean, we have other things for them to do. Well, we have potentially three big projects. Right. And I can tell you that if if we were successful in all three of those, there's no way that between Tom and Randall, they're going to have the administrative capacity to the hand models. So I already called, I called Seth and talked to him today, kind of gave him a heads up. I did too. Oh, I didn't share this. Why not? I called him after you did. Oh, yeah. So I think, but they're, it's on their radar. Anyways. So there's no surprises in, in trying to push administration on. Yeah, but he had no, I mean, I, I'm sure he told you the same thing he's told me. Is, can't give you a yes or no tonight. No. Well, you've you only got 15 days left. Um, that's to apply for the grant. That's yeah, right. Right. the grant. Right. Yeah, so we need to apply for it. Right. Very quickly. Yes. And I, from what my discussion with Randall is, he feels he has the capacity to get the application in, especially if he has some help. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. I mean, I'll have. Do you need a motion packet? Uh, I, I would like motion packet. I was going to say, at this point, what? I would entertain a motion. <laughs> I would, I would still move that we, um, Apply for this year. Whatever it does. This water. water. Right. Yes. Second. Yeah. Motion a second. Further discussion? Did the village not want to do in on this, or is this just not in their daily way? The village's grant opportunity was a different grant opportunity, and they it was through USDA, and they had the possibility of getting up to a couple of million bucks, uh, and they decided not to go down that route. So this swift water was, we were sort of holding off on the swift water until the village decided whether they were going to submit for the USDA grant. And they officially just declined to submit for the What, the they do? what was their thinking in there? Uh, I don't want to get into what their... It was a liability thing, I think. I don't yeah, and ultimately, I think it had to do with the fact that the grant administration, they didn't want to take it on. They asked VEPSA if VEPSA would take it on. VEPSA said they didn't want to take it on, but if an individual municipal entity wanted to, they might be willing to enter into some sort of side agreement with that individual member. But the bottom line is the trustees voted not, right. to, not to pursue the funding. <clears throat> Do you know what the total project costs is? Is envisioned to be? I you know, it's certainly going to be north of a million. And that would be paid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I suspect somewhere between one and two. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't get it right. Yeah, right. a million isn't half of it. To stay focused, there's a motion in a second. I think we've done the further discussion. Is there any further, further discussion? Would that, would that, offer, would that, well, Entail um, seeking LCPC's assistance if needed. I would think that would go without saying. Yeah, I'm not going to agree. Yeah, I'm very acceptable with that. Yeah. I guess the temperature of the board says yes. Okay. 
All right. So the pull out is. That's just your motion. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And the ayes have it. Because we're talking about the Swift Water Grant, uh, Tom has an item about the Swift Swift Current Water Grant. Yeah. I thought it was Swift Current. Maybe it's, it's, a, swift, it's a Swift Current. Swift Current. Uh, uh, fast Water. So uh, uh, for the municipal building in the library. So same program. Uh, this kind of fell in Vermont Emergency Management flat. There's no only so many um, projects that qualify for this, and um, so we're not competing with the market. We won't be competing for the sewage treatment facility. Um, but this is an opportunity that we could apply for uh, to move the library to Legion Field, and then maybe even um, move the municipal complex out of the floodplain as well. Um, and I met with my emergency management last week, um, and they felt um, for the last couple of weeks, I've had a few hard emails of like, what's going on? Like, we need help. You know, we have a big, complicated project with a lot of different funding sources, and um, we have to make this happen. You know, if we stay where we are at the library, we only have $156,000 to adopt the flooding again, which isn't enough money. So we have to, so they've had these interagency meetings. Um, and it kind of worked its way up. And so now um, there's a group called, I think it's called the Interagency Recovery Committee, maybe. Do you know what it's called? Is that what it's called? IRC? I think so. Yeah. It's, uh, but they have resources. And so if we, and our project right now is very complicated, and it's also meaningful to get off the river. And so we need to, um, and their suggestion was to apply for this grant. We can always withdraw, but if, it, if, if the final project moves forward and we meet the qualifications, we can take it and run with it. But if we don't apply now, we lose this opportunity for, you know, right now I'm not even sure what the cap is, but when I told them what the total project was, they didn't even bad enough. Looking at two points. Would this be in lieu of or in addition to a successful application to department? Well, this is what's so great about this group of people that are willing to help us is they sort out the funding stack. Essentially, they're some of the best people in our government right now who are acknowledged that Johnson has a significant need, and they're willing to do the coordination to make sure that the funding stack is built and doesn't look flat so we don't have any. Uh, the issues that I was running into is using federal funding and, that, and having the national debt, if you will. Um, and they would sort that out. If they approve this project for this resource group. Um, they're going to sort out all the funding to make sure. So if we don't know if we have the library grant. If we get if it gets turned down, well, at least we have the Swift Water grant if we get accepted. If we get both, we can choose the best option moving forward. But if we don't apply, we don't have it. We don't. We only have one option: all rights or in the library. Part of the library for that. So it's the motion that you would like the board to make. Uh, <clears throat> to move to allow me to apply, work with uh, Vermont Emergency Management, uh, had agreed to um, help assist with the application process. Actually, the same person is going to assist Randall um, to put in a second grant on behalf of the town for this project as well. And they were very much aware of the two projects. But there's not a lot of interest in this grant because of the how, how you have to qualify and the state would even let them into using using it for some of its properties and very encouraging, hey, like you guys should do this. This meets, this clearly meets the, the needs of the grant. So move forward. We can always turn around and they're willing to do the library to get the application in. Um, the grant man administration side is, should be straightforward, just quarterly reports based on pending project completion. So no match. Okay. No match, same, same situation as uh, this is 5% admin. 5% admin. So this is an opportunity for the town to walk away with paying Randall and my salary from doing this this, this one grant, you know. With the move to authorize to our anticipate the application on behalf of Kevin Johnson <laughs> for a swift current water. Swift current water. Swift water. Yeah. Okay. Is that a motion? 
I believe so. Because we don't need LCPC in on this. Did you second? You have a second, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mark seconded. Motion and a second. Further discussion? You can ask the question. No, I need some. So. I need some. Okay. You can do it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> the ayes have it. Potentially. This one. Drowning? Is, it is, that, is that a good one? That was a real good one. Right? Yeah. Uh, our next item, we are at ahead of schedule. Nothing wrong with that. Well, it's never half right. item. Uh, I bumped that down. Is a conversation on the board's thoughts of the most effective use of these work session meetings? This is really the first time. That we've kind of pushed all non essential business to the first Monday of the month. What are the board's feelings on most effective use of these work sessions? I don't think there's going to be a vote with motions coming out of them a lot. It's going to be a lot more homework, I think. I would, I personally, I would like to get our committees before the board at least one committee per meeting. So that we touch base with all of them <laughs> on a work session times. Yeah, on a work session. Just to check the temperature of the committee out yeah. at the next and, day of the year. Yeah, looks like. and to also um, get with the assignments also. I don't know if this fits with what you're suggesting, but <clears throat> I think it would be appropriate for us at the board, like when we are going to do our. Our planning session meeting mm -hmm. to ask the committees to do the same thing. Yes, to develop a yeah. set of, you know, this this is what we want to do this year. Maybe they have some long long range planning that they want to do too. Mm -hmm. But I think it would really be helpful to us and them to have a better understanding of what their priorities in the coming year are. No surprises, basically. Right. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know how, I don't know whether we accomplish that in the one to one sessions that you're talking about, or simply, you know, through Tom, so that uh, we we'll be able to all the board chairs say, we'd love to see you develop a set of priorities for the government coming here. I would love to see that for the planning and priorities meeting, personally. I've been excited to have it. I think that makes this sense. Year, that makes it's, it's, this year is the <clears throat> because of the camera can't see. So, just uh, to be clear, Evan, would you want to see them submit their plans and priorities or just tell them at that meeting that we'd like to see you do this? I mean, I'd love to see them submit them before the meeting and then present them or could ask questions or give thoughts. Um, sky's the limit when you're writing stuff down. Reality sometimes is different. But at least they're out there. Just thought. I, I like the idea of touching base with each committee at least once a year. I think I think it's really important that they get our appreciation and know that we value their work and having them in front of us at least once a year. It's good about it. communication too. Yeah, just communication. How are you doing? What are your dreams? What are your goals? Yeah, yeah, great committees, and I think the rail trail is blowing me away. Like, how much is going on? I mean, literally, there's a traffic jam on the weekend down a road crossing with people. So cool, crossing and people parked all along the access. It's pretty. The rail trail is an important committee. There were, you know, many of them planned. Other ideas besides mine? That's a general idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's topics that I'd like to see in work session meetings, but are there specific topics other board members would like to see in work session meetings? You can tell a big big chunk of this one is the possible road policy. I get that moving forward, and work session meetings are a good, good opportunity to <clears throat> make these. Policy change requests or having a conversation about it. 
no floor, so you can see there's no committee appointments tonight. And ideally, no liquor or cannabis licenses, but sometimes they're time sensitive. We'll talk about that later. No, I see requests to the board. No. <laughs> uh, one thing I've noticed is that sometimes things they keep being pushed off at meetings, like there's no conclusion. And like maybe as part of this work session, like make it delegate the time to make the final decision. Like at some time, you just have to accept a product. It might not be the best product you're going to make, but it's better than what you had. And by making no decision, you're actually not moving forward at all. Spend all that time. So like with this class four road policy, you could say, okay, delegate out your homework, expect to make a decision at the, you know, the May 20th meeting or whatever. So that way there's like a finish line that kind of pushes everybody to like do that extra homework or make sure they formulate an opinion before the meeting or something. But just to like have an end date for these items that kind of keep dragging. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, you know, my global vision for these work session meetings is <clears throat> tackling the items that keep falling off our plate. Right. You know, policy this, policy that. Um, and Tom is keeping a running tab of, you know, sort of things that we haven't done. That's my goal. Yeah. For these would be to do those, get them done. And, you know, to me, this class four run policy is a classic example. This has been hanging out there four years. ATB has been at least a few five years. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's going to take us a little while to get through the backlog. But I think once we do that, then we can do like, you know, like the purchasing policy that came up kind of, it's been hinted at at several meetings, but it sort of came to a head at the last meeting. We could, we could deal with that. Yeah. Right. Get it done. We're going to have to just defer it to the meeting that, you know, we're not going to get it done. And I think it was a, a really other a good suggestion for trying to get that. You know, that would be to come up with specific ideas that we're meeting for the next word session's agenda. And we can either communicate those to Evan as chair to set the agenda later, but, you know, so, so we're like the class four road policy. I don't think we're going to make a decision on that tonight, but to Tom's point, could we set next word session as the date that we're going to adopt the policy? Review all the data we've got and pull the trigger of that next work session. That's a full meeting right there. You we never said we're going to get everything done and have nothing to do. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? No, I'm uh, worried uh, we're going to go to two meetings a month until midnight. <laughs> I like this. So I like this work session meeting plan. I think we can make it work. It's going to be difficult. So we're really going to have to be disciplined. Right, because other stuff seems to be true. It does, and it will. We're just going to have to stop applying for grants. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Mike? I was uh, 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 been <clears throat> I was uh, trying to get hold of somebody to come in to our discussion on class four roads. Which is coming up. But I agree with what was said. I do think, you know, we, we talked about that, that big visionary meeting we're supposed to. I think we already have enough stuff on our plate already to tackle that without having another three or four hundred meeting. Just have a small vision. <laughs> and again, I'm part of the part of the push for this because I feel like since I've been on the board, we have so much stuff constantly dealing with culverts and storm drains and floods that we're not actually thinking, what's your what do you think Johnson should look like What what what's the board's goal of where we're headed? I mean if it's just to put out brush fires, then we'll, we'll do that. But really we're the leaders of this town. Uh, unfortunately there's a lot of unknowns. They could come down to our town in the next few years, which could really stick a wrench in the works, right? There's a lot of unknowns there that, that, are, that's good, that are on the horizon for this moment. Yeah. And it all starts on top of the hill. Yeah. 
in the elementary schools. And, and we may be in the putting out fires uh, more so if that happens. And we are having a vision that might not be there. That could be too bad. You don't, be, you don't go anywhere with that. Goal. I understand. You know, every operation, every organization needs to have a goal. Where we're right. headed. If you have not, no goal, then you wander. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had a goal for a lot of years. Trying to change that. Yeah. It's last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. It's in my mind. You could. I think we're we have to have well we're all kind of in agreement, and it's gonna take a little while to get into the rhythm of business happening. First first of my first two guys would it's like I called the work to the board on the back of that on all your applications I was like thinking about what to do in the future. We had like my item, the your item. Yeah, there's probably even more. And so if you think of anything, kind of yeah. So if there are additional items, you know, we should, that, that's a good place to tag them on because I, I think we could use that as our planning list where it can stay. Yeah, because it's going to stay there. Right? We always get to find the game now, right? And if we get class four levels policy done, it can come to less. That's what I, I don't know if I'm ready to see that when we call it <laughs> I'll probably keep this discussion of these meetings in about 10 to 15 minutes for another couple of weeks. That way we can kind of pivot a little bit and see how it works. But you guys had a chance to get feedback as we kind of always do anyways, but thank you. Um, our next agenda item is a painful one, but there's a bowl of print offs about, I don't know if it's painful, but it's discussions on the next steps. <clears throat> for the business part, industrial, commercial part, and the bottom uh, Did every board member receive the email from Pat Ripley? Which I can see here. This is your... Well, it came from... Randall? Yeah. Yeah. These are all the documents that were included. I forwarded the links. So the documents. Uh, so those are yours. That's why you aren't getting them. <laughs> can I? Mine are over here. Can I? Yeah. Why? Can why? I say the specific concern? And I don't believe that the board needs to finalize the decision tonight. I think this conversation needs to be had, and the timeline needs to be established. The concern. And this is from Pat Ripley. Uh, well, so there's an email from Randall who received an email yeah. from Pat Ripley. Yeah, so this is an excerpt from Pat Ripley's yes. email, and it's the concerns. The concern is, they, uh, the town, we've had an action in by September 30th, and will not be able to move past the NEPA without proof of <clears throat> being secured by them. Uh, not just a vote to go to a bond, the actual funds secured. They're running out of time quickly. Uh, no notice to proceed will be issued so they can prove they have a match secured. At this point, further delays in securing the match seriously jeopardize the project. To that end, uh, I believe we have some information from Randall. Um, you've only printed out. No, you're both with the amortization schedule. So. Yeah. Uh, one of them is the uh, amortization schedule. The county went for a two hundred thousand dollar bond for twenty years. Correct. Yes. The other is an amortization schedule with the town for two bonds for three hundred thirty thousand for twenty years. The other is possible additional tasks and or expenses that are laid out. Uh, totaling $250,000. There's the only items. And then we'll put this sheet together. Let's pass uh, from the exact. 
like the different funding sources. I didn't really get a chance to look at that. Yeah, that highlights everything really. So it tells you what your cost oh. is and how you work the funding. Oh, that's the one we looked at. Yeah, but it lays it out different. So the state permitting, he has a two hundred fifty thousand five hundred. Listed weirdly. Did you send something I'm going to send archaeological and the VM number and that's yeah, and that's in well, that's in that's in this in, in the permits. So. Yeah, it's in this spreadsheet here. The, um, this one is it. actually from Mumley, um, Town Council Small Scale and Industrial Park, possible additional past and or expenses. My understanding is this spreadsheet was prepared by Mumley. I believe this was prepared by Mumley um, in the presentation that Tyler gave us in our last video. Do we need to go now? I'm kind of old. Certainly. So relying on these young people's brains. Uh, but these are all worst case. And this 250500 for worst case, that's for what? Public bed assistance, primary mag uh, ag mitigation, deer wintering, wetland buffer impacts, uh, permit fees, um, highway intersection improvement design, and beach and pool. All of those. Potential worst case cost, the way that Tyler had made it sound, is the over 250,500, which you'll see rolls right into yeah, the state permit studies yeah. impact fees. You'll notice next to that, the funding stack says zero, which means that it all falls on the path, right? Yeah. yeah. Then there's the environmental review at 40,600. I believe that is worst case scenario um, from a project Ooh. estimate of Tyler, right? That is what you have here. Yeah, and as we noted, the last time we had a conversation at 46.5 at the top means as our units spent. Uh, I'm fine with it showing up as project costs, but it doesn't need to show up in the total that we need to raise because it's already spent. Correct. <clears throat> So that's so we yeah, can pull that right out of the funding stack too. Uh, I guess yeah, it could come out of this stack. I don't know why they call it stack, huh? Forty six five is already been spent. Yeah, yeah it's already it's already, already been paid. Why? Um, any other construction costs? And LDD uh, fees, which uh, Pat said, that's that fixed one percent construction cost. He doesn't even set that. Um, all of this rolls up into that three hundred twenty-two thousand nine twenty-nine. That's that same number that Tyler was talking about. Yeah, that number is just simple. <clears throat> it's a really straightforward calculation. I got that for. My spreadsheet, um, the total project costs are estimated at 1723890 The local match, our match, it's it's a 50-50 deal. Yeah. Okay. So the local match is 861.945. Um, we didn't get the EDA grant, so that comes out of it. Um, we have committed Five hundred and thirty-nine thousand sixteen dollars from ARPA funds. Uh, and if, so, if you basically subtract that from our match, you come up with the three twenty-two nine twenty-one. Mm -hmm. So that's that does not include any of the additional costs that they're mm -hmm. not going to be like these costs that are on the um, here. I think I think we can actually subtract forty five thousand dollars from that too because not from that because the, our local five thirty nine one six ARPA that does not include the forty six thousand that we already put in correct so we do have this so that forty six thousand could be true our we just I think we just lowered the project cost of forty six thousand why because you're considering a match. 
Yeah, because we just need to prove what even the project goes over. We have to show that we can raise eight hundred sixty-one thousand to move forward. Just that fifty to match the MBRC. And if we're saying we have five thirty-nine of remaining ARPA, that's our local match. But we didn't factor in that we already have put forty-six thousand five hundred towards this project for our local match. Yeah. That of ARPA, you know. Uh, uh, my understanding was I, I would love to be able to claim that, but I don't think we can because yeah, we spent that it. money prior to the grant award of the grant. Yeah, we needed to spend that money yeah, just to right. get it to a point where we could apply for it. Correct. Yeah. I'd love to be able to take advantage of it, but I don't think we yeah. can. Even though it went towards the application. Yeah. I, I, we can check, yeah. but, I, but I'm pretty sure that we were told that anything that we put into it, engineering wise prior to the grant award was not an eligible experience for it. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. It just seems that's a really expensive application. So, in the end, what's the total number that we need? Well, it really depends on who you believe. You've got yeah. this spreadsheet. I took the spreadsheet and run off the top of my head. It's it's the very top of investigate upgrades to existing utilities, water and wastewater. Well, in his original proposal, Tyler said that he didn't think that they were going to be any improvements needed. But did he would check with the wastewater pumps and see if there was. So they're carrying twenty five thousand for that. Yeah. Again, 25,000. Yeah. Um, and highway intersection improvement design, V-Trans approval. In his initial proposal, he indicated that he did not think that the number of traffic trips generated were going to warrant a level of service change from V-Trans. So why are we carrying 25,000 here? That was honestly not what he said. These are worst case scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. So that traffic study, we have an opportunity to come up with great. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that that would be considered a full blown traffic study. It's, it's putting counters out. The traffic study would be more a question of analyzing the, the turns so, and you know, all of that stuff. But the traffic, Count data would certainly reduce the sixteen thousand dollar estimated cost. I would think. Yeah. Um, you know, and then on the on the rest of the list, they got wetlands delineation. Well, there are no wetlands. There's no hydric soils. There's no map wetlands. There's nothing. So I don't think we need to carry anything to the wetlands. Seventy five hundred bucks there. Um, deer wintering, buffing, buffering. We had talked about and actually had a letter from uh, of course, Parks and Recreation that came that they would accept the Goma, the Goma lot or the Pindle lot on the other for deer wintering. But I don't think that 40,000 is, is a number that we need to carry. The aggregate mitigation is in there at 40. But Tyler had indicated in his initial proposal that he thought it was 25. Right. And but I wouldn't is, say it's primary. And well, this is it is. Well, it's just because it's soils. It's, soils. it's, yeah, it's, right, it's but, not, it's not. But this is payment in the little land offset. <laughs> How does that work? If you mitigate offsite more acreage than you're mitigating on site. If we have prime Adlands, what else can other properties have homes? They're like homes now. I, I don't know what's what I'm trying to write. There might be potential. Except that we're going to remove them from my wall. But it's my point is there might be potential. We all have 42. But, but I don't know. Basically, you're working down to a number of right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, or less. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so at, at the end of the day, you've got the unmet need, which is the 330. Um, we, we also budgeted 75,000 of potential surplus. 
which we two the grant match. So yeah. From the onset, I wanted to have a conversation about that and what it would look like if the town of Parliament sell that one percent or two percent or zero percent. I believe we can win ourselves money at zero percent. You know, the, the three twenty two is gonna stay no matter what, even though you lower the total population. Yeah, it's just what we're adding to it. So we're we're changing you no know, three twenty-two. I guess 322 stays there, yeah. But this 1,741,000, where's that? 1,741,000. Are you looking at the big sheet? No, because as we, as we reduce this 250,500 down, that 322 drops. Where are you taking the two fifty out of it's, it's in the funding? Yeah. Well, state permit studies impact fees and permits. So you take one seven four one. That's many. This. What's the total project cost down to one six two two one two nine? Divided by two, for NBRC. we would reduce the funding stack for NBRC to eight hundred and eleven thousand. So we wouldn't hit the full amount, but then um, we would take that. You no, know, I minus five three million. No, I don't no, think no, you no. can use two seven two. Is this? Is this estimated unfunded cost of 677, 768? Is that the 322 plus 250? No, it's not. I don't know where that number's coming to. Well, looks like they're adding a 10% construction contingency. Mm -hmm. oh. Um. I don't know why he's. How's he coming up with a, a total estimated project cost of two million seventy eight seven twenty seven? Uh, that's the one seven four one plus three twenty two. No, so, because maybe because we have to pay it back for borrowing it, to pay it back. When is the one seven this one one plus let us see for that? Okay. But if we dropped I thought he's got the LDD figures of seventeen. 238. I thought that came out of the grant. I didn't think that it was an add-on to the total cost. Yes, you're sure not as an add-on. Hmm. See what I'm talking about, Evan? So it raises the yeah. yeah. I guess the total construction cost. But the initial application was how much? One thousand one million seven twenty three eight ninety eight four. Yeah. Right. So he's adding to that environmental scale, which we can fold into the grant and they pay fifty percent of that, right? Well, another way to think about it is the maximum amount that we're going to get from the grant is half of the original. 861. 861, Okay. They're not good. That number's not going to be So. Oh, bummer. Yeah. But if we don't, like, if we lower that environmental too low, then that number will look down. Like, if our total project cost is below two times 861, then they won't give us the 861. 
you know, it'll, it'll yeah, but he has way. he has that as just construction. His environmental is a different line on together. Yeah, I'm not worried about <laughs> going down. I'm not worried about getting below that original baseline. It would be a good problem to have on it. So what's our goal with this discussion right now? Do we have a do we have a number of we're, we don't. I think our goal should be perhaps two things. <clears throat> One is addressing your question, do we borrow from our revolving loan fund? Well, I not to cut you off, I would like to see um what you did. If, I hate to cut you off, but I'm gonna go with anything. I'm sorry, are you, are you okay? I, I, I can recover. So if we hit uh, our projected year end surplus, which we'll know what? Two and a half months from now? Then, assumably, we will fulfill the wishes of the voters and inject another $75,000 in the great fund match. Reserve fund, correct? Actually, I don't think, I think that was a very. Well, was, yeah, but I don't think it was earmarked for the for the grant fund, was it? I thought it was. Which one was earmarked for project costs? Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. Hey, where is that, Duncan? Yeah. I know, I can find it in my computer really quick. Well, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we get seventy five. So proposed, uh, we're putting one hundred ten thousand uh, to reduce next year's taxes. taxes. Yep. yep. Uh, we're proposing seventy five thousand dollars for the industrial park expense. So we need to see that accompanied for and stat to actually see accurate numbers. This forty six thousand, the town is not does not need to come up with that. The town is spent. It's already yeah, it's already been yeah, it's out of place. But it's still kind of, so. I guess it still should sit in the funding stack. I'm. Sure, but already spent. We don't need to come up with it. I guess I cut you off to tell you I would be interested in seeing Randall uh, or Pat or you or Tom uh, rework the spreadsheet and incorporate the $75,000 into it. We also reserved $9,249 for other purposes. Yeah, whatever. Um, in the grant match reserve fund, we injected five hundred forty nine thousand one ninety nine. Now that was a, that, no, one. that was the five thirty nine of our book plus nine thousand dollars. No, the nine was from last year. Was was last year's or this year's unspent funds if we don't spend it? How much do we have in the grant, sir? The previous year, we had. Uh, Put in how much? Grant match reserve fund. Of course, it struck out because it's July one of the previous year, and we didn't allocate the fund until September, right? right. I think it was twelve thousand dollars. Long skinny. I would like to see the numbers with the seventy-five thousand dollars incorporated. I'd like to see five hundred forty-eight thousand, not five hundred thirty-nine thousand. That's another nine thousand dollars in our match already. I would, look, I would be interested in bringing the grant match reserve fund down to about $9,000. That way we still have money if committees when they go for grants, they're typically not going for grants that are going to be huge ones. But I don't want to see it gone. What's the total amount of in there? What? The yeah. grant I think it's around $12,000. We did it by percentages previously. It was percentage of the post lot over. I could, we could find it in minutes. We did it doesn't it. show. It doesn't show in the in the front balance because we didn't. She. Well, we um, with all of that being said, I would like to see what it was like, what the numbers looked like if we borrow one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars from ourselves at zero percent. That's bolstering. No, no, revolving loan fund, and then an amortized savings schedule on what was left over based on 
based on what what dollar what twelve dollar the perfect dollar I got this I don't know if we need to talk about these ten percent and twenty five percent contingencies yet but as soon as that Excel spreadsheet is built out you can just add two more tabs and do a ten percent and a twenty five percent and at least know what you would need to go to the bond bank for and you can build out an amortization schedule really quick. Um, understanding it's not binding, but these aren't binding limits. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot. I don't, did that make sense to everybody here? 100%. Yes, it does. And I'm looking for, at the end of the day, a solid number. And I don't know whether, I mean, you're in the business. Is, is 10% frequency construction frequency rational nowadays? It's just, you're in the business. I don't know anymore. Depends on the Well, all of that being said, I would like this brought down to bad case, not worst case. I think at the very least, we can turn two hundred and fifty thousand five hundred. We have two hundred thousand. Can I throw out another solution instead of bonding that would prevent town like well? If you do what you just said you did, you want to do, it reduces our required match to sixty three thousand. We can take out a tax anticipation note up to 80% of our tax. So we could take out like $300,000 to borrow and move. And I'm going to come down to 63,000. We take 322 and you subtract 175. We subtract 75,000. Um, yeah, but you need to take 322 and subtract all those and then add 250. Yeah, all those. But I, I only think we need to add back two hundred thousand. Right. Oh, no, I don't think we do either. I I I got it down to one hundred and twenty-five thousand. <clears throat> but that's probably well, you're cutting a little too conservative, fine. Than me, Duncan. That's probably cutting a little too fine. I'm not doing any contingency <clears throat> on construction. I just want to get the project. I want to get the grant. We need to, what we need to do first and foremost is secure the notice to proceed. But a, ta the, a tax anticipation note would have would be doing payable here for that, right? Correct. Oh. But if it's only sixty three thousand, we can do that because we're going to have that in unexpended funds. But, that's, but it's hang on, it's sixty three thousand. It's sixty three thousand <clears throat> just for construction. We need more than just construction. We need the we need construction the plus this plus forty thousand six hundred. If this is really 125, it sounds like we're we need close to 188 or something. I spit out a whole bunch of crap right after I cut you off. So I'm going to shut up. <laughs> you can remember yeah. where we were at. Um, yeah, what you were asking. All of that was good. Um, I, I would volunteer to work with Tom and Randall to try and come back to the board at our next about our next work session. Here, here's, here's, let me finish the, the rest of this. Maybe, maybe that timeline doesn't work. If we go to bond, um, at, at a minimum, it requires uh, probably a month notice. The, the, the town clerk or whoever has to provide a notice posted in a paper of general circulation three, three consecutive Three consecutive weeks plus thirty days. Nah, right. Mm, no, I think you can. 30. I think you can do it all within the same window. But but, but I, I guess what we should come up with is a plan. Um, and one other thing we really need to do. I can't stress this enough. We need a good bond attorney because a good bond attorney will do all this stuff. List it used to be Paul Giuliano, but Paul's dead. No, and I don't know who I don't I don't know who's a good bond attorney. Well done. He did. That's what I said. So he did. He did. He helped me big time. Yeah. I worked with Paul several times on bonds. issues. He, he's really good. Um, but he's not available. So that's one thing we should find out is who is available. <laughs> um, again, it's it's an Australian ballot vote. So it's not it's not a regular vote. It's Australian ballot, and if, if there's a required public meeting um, before the vote, 
Do you wish? Information yeah. needs. It's often held the night before, but it doesn't have to. Um, so I, 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 I would, I would suggest that we do a couple things. One is I really think we should actively and strongly consider borrowing from the Revolve Fund. And will that eliminate it? You go to buy uh, For some of them. No, I think we'll still have to go to bond. And it depends on how much. I mean, we can set a target number tonight if we want. But what that should be. We have we have roughly 240 something thousand in the I thought it was only 180. No, it's more than that. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any report, Evan? It's in the report. It will well, it's in the revolving loan plan. The the actual amount available in the revolving loan. We don't want to under that whole uh, we wouldn't mm -hmm. no. But it, it, it makes so the, the reason I think we should do it is a couple fold. One is we can get zero percent interest on um, and we could set because it we're loaning it towards so. loaning it to our <laughs> Um, and we can, um, oh, we can set a turn yeah. so we could set a 20 year, 25 year, we could even set a 30. We want it to be. Um, but the other you know, critical piece is if we don't use that fund, we're going to lose it. Lose it. That's, a, that's our own fault. It is. We have not used that fund. We have not made it available to people. Well, let's <laughs> use a doggone thing and get over. Well, this, this has a couple of benefits, I think, in my mind, I know you disagree. Um, using the money accomplishes one of the initial purposes of the, the loan. It increases economic activity. It gets a property, um, you know, with tax rolls, and it creates jobs. So those are three big items that were part of the original grant process. And again, if we don't, you know, whether it's our fault or not, we're going to lose the money. What's your check yes. about the tenant? I don't really get um, that. I know you could. And, and, probably, and probably almost anybody could. But it doesn't mean that it can't be paid back. And it would be. Of course it would be. And so then you could have that money back, Mark, and use it for the purposes you think would be better suited. What, 25, 20,000 a year? Zero interest. Yeah. 30 years. 10 years is good. 50 years. <laughs> what if the town ever put in an account? Like once the town bought that property, it came off tax rate. What we should have been doing is putting it in the in the little taxes. Well, there's a one night in the town should have been putting tax oh, money yeah. in the so an account. So when we went forward as, with this uh, project. We could have taken that six thirty three paying more two eight paying two. I was the actual tax. Right, but we still could uh have done um, we received uh yeah. monies. Uh, we still could have uh, paid the town a little we'll tax payment for those years yeah. Yeah. once it had been spent the operators years and not the actual so unless I'm greatly mistaken we have two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I was going to say almost 300. But you would have been pretty close, wouldn't you? Would have been wrong. So we must be getting interest on Let's get the net, right? Hello. Yeah. I thought it was around 250. So Rosemary so. doesn't. What is Rosemary having the highest interest account for? What is it? Why is our manager? Is that how much? Or burning that money. That's why it's going to be fire. This is the minimum we can on this before the floor for under 30. Yeah, yeah. Our money, it's, and now we're it's adding our local match. It's going to be $5,000 on the expended funds from last year, right? So, that, so that's, five, that's part of that 589. That lowers that 75000 13. 
then if we do 175 from the vault null file. You said 275, right? But you don't have you you don't have anything in there for I'm just talking about solely about making sure the project goes forward. All right. So I want to finish where I was going with this stuff. Um so I I would love to volunteer and work with Tom and Randall, we can have that discussion. I see. We can sort that out um, and come back to the board with a proposal for some amount to bond, some amount to borrow, um, and whether or not you want to do it. But we, I agree with Pat, we, we need to sort of shoot a good out and talk. That's at some point, you know, not people in the near future. Oh, no, make clear. Make yeah. a decision okay. which, which way we're going to go. Um, the other thing that we could consider, I haven't thought of tax anticipation notes. I don't like tax anticipation note because it's going to be paid back in a year. Um, and, you know, even if it's sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, that's an automatic, you know, three and a half, four cents per group. You know, it's just wiping me out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to change the nature of the project. <laughs> I guess you <laughs> Um. But another thing that we could consider is a tax increment finance system. Yeah. A TIF. Do we have a TIF qualified area? We don't, but we we could create one in the area of the industrial area. Well, one time. Of course, the NBRC is their housing, and we like to do housing again. No. Wouldn't that just incentivize yeah. the sale of lots? What's that? Wouldn't that just incentivize the sale of you lots? Borrow on the anticipated. And you borrow on the anticipated income or the anticipated cost of doing the project, and you're basically freezing the land price at the time of that loan right now, you know, whatever. And then each year the increment is. The additional amount minus the original, and that is the amount. That's the increment. That's, that's really clear to me. <laughs> it's it's playing okay. play game money. Stop. What it does, what it does, is you're you're essentially betting on a future grand list, and that income of taxes from that anticipated grand list is what is going to pay you back. It's paying that's the like, short the short of it. So for a period of time, you're not seeing any real growth. Mm -hmm. grand, you're not seeing any real growth in your revenue. revenue. Yes. You're seeing growth in the grand list, but not in your revenue until it's paid off. And then once it's paid off, you're getting 100%. It's how you can put up a high-rise apartment building because you know that's going to bring in X number of jobs, X number of residents, and an enormous grand list increase. And so you can like borrow against yourself, essentially. To do the housing is a great example. That's why I asked that question. You need a lot of money slick if you can show housing because every half acre brings in 300,000. You have to take a lot more than 400,000. Housing development is a good debt problem. Yeah, so I don't expect anybody to make a decision on whether we should do that, but it's something we could at least consider as potential funding. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. That's a really good idea, especially if we can draw the yeah, yeah, and whether we can pull all that off in a timely fashion, make this present happen. Good luck. I don't know, but but anyway, I think if you guys are comfortable, I think your suggestion of coming back to the board with a you know a more rational proposal and a number, right? Yeah, an actual number. Number. real. Now, understanding that you know some of these, this two hundred and fifty thousand dollar number is cool. We're gonna we're gonna have to make some assumptions on that, which could jeopardize if, if we're wrong, if we guess wrong, when we bet wrong, you know, we'll be at that risk. Yeah, that's why I was more cool You are so as cheap as I was. Not quite. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> <That's> refreshing as hell. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I threw a lot out there. I don't, it sounds like we have a plan. You're going to come back with uh, a the, number. A number, a number to bond. Do that work with everybody? The board and think we'll do that? Yeah, yeah. And the spreadsheet of where you're going to get the, get the other. Is this whole project going to pay us all back? How long is your run? 
A lot of people ask me. Well, that's a good is question. Is it worth it? Oh. Is this whole thing worth it? How long is the run you're talking yeah. about? You know, another thing we I, I heard somebody talk about selling a lot for $300,000 or something. Okay. Is, is More that... builds are expanding. Do we know how much their lots are going for? No, but I heard some talk a while back about selling a lot for $300,000. In, in this park? In this park. I, I, don't, don't, I don't see that. I don't either. That's a no, pipe dream. 50 to, 50 to 75,000 an acre is probably what you could. I was going to say, Pat Ripley did a comparison of other industrial parks that believe throughout all of the park. Yeah, you asked me. I did. That was right around then. But how large is the parcel? 19 acres? Totals. Yeah. Just a so I'll do 19 acres times $60,000. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. I'm not crazy to my What's that? $1.2 million? That's, I begin to wonder if this whole thing's even worth it. That is true. Be a great spot for a water park. I did well on that. <laughs> just throwing it out there. All right. It, 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 I just want more members. It's a legitimate I, question. I, I'm with you. I, Thought this was a 20th century idea. It's long past. Be, before you go down that road, just remember what Pat Ripley said at the meeting. And we have $861,000 in grant money available. Do you want to? Do you want to turn that back in? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. You can turn 861 into one seven million seven or million eight. Relatively easily. Well, because we have our because you have our money and we take the tax rate for all. Yeah. So, so another way to look at that really is, you know, the potential cost of the taxpayer is probably going to be somewhere between three hundred and six hundred thousand dollars. Is that worth it? I don't think in this climate right now, with all of the increases in taxes, it's going to be an easy sell. But you're not saying bonding for that. You're going to, that's the impact on the taxpayer. You're talking about a much lower. I'm bonding. talking about the total project cost. So those, exactly. that bonded expense, the ARPA money, the bonded money, the reserve fund, I don't know that's going to get paid back. You stay away from bonding and allows, so we use taxes for one year, right? In an amount that we know we anticipate to go have an excess tax. It gets the grant, it gets a notice to proceed, we're good. Then we can bond for the true project costs in the future, but you only really get one shot to bond. But say we bond, we're doing 10% contingency and we fall short. Now we're going to have to go to the tax, the rate taxes in that year. Or right? we cut something. Or we'll cut, cut projects. Or you keep the project at its original submitted cost. Don't get to answer your question about, you know, if you don't lose, use the money, you don't lose it. I mean, you hear that talk all the time. I mean, oh. you, you can just look at that battery, that car charger, that worthless car charger outside that that uh, the government spends seventy five hundred bucks on. Oh, we gotta we gotta do it. It's not costing us. We gotta use it, use that money, or we're gonna lose it. So, what good is that stupid thing been out there? Well, I just hope that this if project. If you had an electric car, listen, you might listen, have listen, an opinion. Listen, listen, I just hope that this project doesn't turn into a a fool's errand. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a random thought out there, and I know that these lots are not gonna sell instantaneously. Longevity of town uh, costs the taxpayers. If we sell these lots at fifty five thousand dollars an acre, which is on the low end of market value, we we'll have a million dollars. Are you comfortable telling the taxpayers that you brought a million dollars to the town? Them bonding for 330,000. I, I honestly think it's maybe around 380,000, but that's my random head. So then we would have a million dollars spend on what? We had to pay the note off. We we call it 400,000. We have 500,000 total project. I we say 500,000 short profit. Plus, why not? We have $500,000. So we have all the worst money back. You have exponential gains from your grand list. Not even talk about that. I'm yeah. not talking about future tax rule. I'm just talking we have all of our money back, right? 
we did get the industrial part for what cost to the taxpayers? So a little over twenty. You're, you're, you're yeah. talking about the the land itself. I'm saying once, the, whole, once the, the whole project, once the project was done and the lots were sold, I'm not saying they would sell overnight. I'm saying long term, ten years, sure. So over ten years, we got the the taxpayers a continual source of revenue that reduces their property taxes or at least hedges against inflation. It's for a cost of what? Is the Cambridge Park full? But they don't have water and sewer. Or three base power. Mm -hmm. Garrett's and they're also by the airport. Aren't we an opportunity zone? Mm -hmm. So there's another incentive spot. Can we take that comment from the public? Can you take that? Huh? Can you take that? He's asking. I would love you. it if you would give one. I'm just saying. When the voters voted to buy that property, was 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 that a mandate? Was the voters saying we want to build this in Lake Desperate Park? Because that's what we were buying for, wasn't it? I believe so. I don't know if it's a mandate. Well, that was all uh, still in diapers. <laughs> I'm glad you admit that. It wasn't just, quite that part. It just seems to me that it's it's a long term investment and. Uh, we need to bring some money to this. I think the best thing I can find is it's drawing a fifth district to include other parts of the town to get to the house. That's going to bring it. I would need to do more research on that. I like who uh, Admittedly saying I'm ignorant on that. That's why. But I you, think we You can't even find somebody that wants to move it to there outside of possibly the same street. Right. I mean, nobody signed a letter of intent. Why would anybody sign a letter of intent for a permitted park that may or may not happen? I wouldn't. Especially yeah. if they read our meeting minutes and they right. that yes. they right. select board members mean, that didn't support it. It doesn't seem like there's any demand for it. I think there is demand. We're you know we're being told by John Mandeville. I understand John's not there anymore, but when John was at at, at LEDC, he said. He pushed it hard. He thought there was, was a, a huge to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, anyway, we've got yeah, well we, beyond that 15 or 20 minutes we did. No, no, I, I think this is important. Come I, back. I guess temperature of the board, are they okay with Don Gill working with Tom and Randall? And wholeheartedly, I would appreciate it if they give me grace. It's totally about it. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I appreciate more information. What is what is the part of the number? I mean, at the end of the day, you know I'm max. I, I think it's an outdated idea. Mm -hmm. but it's okay. Mm -hmm. But at least we have more information and I really appreciate the work you work. Nobody's trying to discount your work. No, no, I haven't. No. It, hey, I got nothing. If if people don't want to move forward, let's decide. I didn't say I wouldn't move forward. I said I have I started to have a little reservation. Yeah. No, I fine. didn't say that I was going to be against it. What did we pay for the land? A little over two hundred thousand. Plus interest over ten or twenty years. No, yeah, we paid for it five years. Did we pay for it? Yeah. Those men just said we finished paying for it last year. What, what did we pay? 213 for it? No, I think we paid. So we didn't because it would have been another pond. Yeah. We had, I was going to say, five I years. Because of no. Yeah. It, was, it was a five year. Oh, why don't you go? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't vote to buy it that long ago. Uh, 2018. Maybe, maybe it was five years then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 2018. It was, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that would make sense. In my decade. I've been with the diapers in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I went back and I checked the minutes to the town meeting uh, in 2018. Like, there was no promises made that there's not going to be any cost of taxpayers. 
and in numerous places in there. That, that was just some kind of rumor that got out there. You know, I think a lot of people, uh, Eric, if I remember correctly, Eric stood up and said, we're going to do everything we can to make this, you know. As least of a burden as possible. Right. But there was never any, nobody ever stood up and said, yeah, you're going to cost you a nickel. I forgot to bring that minutes with me, and I was going to hold some of the discussion. Do we have any clarity from the village? Do they still, are they still interested in it? Uh, I think they're waiting to hear something from the state, but we might hear from them. We did a walk through last week. Thursday with an engineer. A walk through there, a walk through here, and everywhere. All of it. Okay. I would just Lock say away. anecdotally, I think you know I've had my doubts about the very the wiseness of it, but if they did locate there and they were willing to pay market price, um, it could reduce the expense of that kind of consumer. They would bring all the piping. Yeah, that that I understand. And the drug would bring it in tax now. Unless they agree to pay a tax figure the office. Sure, they we could certainly ask. Okay, yeah, I don't think it's unreasonable at all. I think they're going to build it here and we tear this building. Then. Yeah, good. Huh. I like to say they're going to build it. All right, so building. now that we've gotten off topic, we're talking yeah. about the funding. Okay. I, I believe the sentiment of the board is that yes, you can work to Colin and Randall. To come back to us uh, next work session, we need some more information. And I believe the board said that I could get part of some of those conversations. Yes. Okay. Next item. Oh, this one is near and dear to your heart, Mike. Right. Last four roll policy. It says next steps, but I feel like it should be like next drives or something. <laughs> Well, some of those okay. fast forward as well as yeah, I think we need to bring everybody that was involved in this this whole process years ago. Uh, Meaning planning commission? Yeah. And and everybody else that had something to do with it to come in and give us their input on this. Because if you go look at what was drawn up and then there's all kinds of notations and changes. And everything. It, this just got to be such a mess. What you think, Don? I I don't want to start all over again. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, me neither. But but let's can we build on what we already got and get everybody involved that was involved before and have them give us their input and just approve it instead of picking it apart. I think this is building all of that. I know, but it's uh, it just got to be such a mess. I have and no it was so much disappointment on everybody that participated in this. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion you're not going to make everybody happy. Well, true, but still. But I I have no issue. I have no issue at all. So, you know, putting. So let me let me let me jump back half a step. So. I sent out three documents that I got from Paul Ward. The first one was their, their proposed changes. The second one was the select board's response to their proposed changes. And the third one was the planning commission's response to the select board's response. <laughs> and then I tried to take all of those responses and work them into one policy. And that's the one that you have mm -hmm. here that has Paul's comments on the side. Still, this one. I don't know if that's. It's the one that says page one. Yeah, page one. You probably took it from me. I might have. <laughs> I've got a copy. I have it on my. So what I would, what I would. Suggest is everybody read, read that because what I tried to do, and I talked with a number of people, including the, you know people like Dean West, who are representing you know an interest in you know, RJ and Daryl and you know people like that that participated. 
The one that's in the this draft here doesn't require anybody to get a permit for snow clearing. It doesn't require anybody to get a permit for annual basic maintenance. Which they're doing right now. Yeah. So, and they're already doing it. Yeah. So why why impose a requirement for a permit? That they're not going to get in the hand of the last 10 years. <laughs> anyway. So, anyway, uh, my thought process would be for us to look at this and see if we can agree that this or something similar to this is good. And then we can circulate it to whoever you want and ask for feedback before it gets adopted. Well, let's do that then. Thank you for doing this. Because I read through all three. Oh, it's a, it was it, my yeah. stretch to figure out the difference. It's, it's bad. It's That's why I so I, I spent the time this to highlight. Yeah, I spent, mm -hmm. spent some time trying to incorporate the changes in all three documents. Thank you. And honestly, I put there were some things that I thought were important that were in the original document. I added those back in. <clears throat> a couple of things that I thought should be there. <clears throat> you going back to your concern or lack of concern about people getting permits. <clears throat> Seems like we gotta have some idea what's going on on those roads. What you know, when I when I walk up the mine road, the sugar makers were up there bringing in fade, trying to fix the road out for the ATD clubs that are should do we wanna know what's going on up there? The other way this is written right now, it doesn't require a permit, but it, it, it requires them to notify the town before they do that. Okay. Now, will they do that? But the sugar maker family in a culvert are trying, you know, try, yeah. trying to make... And I specifically didn't include culverts in routine maintenance because to me, culverts had a lot of ramifications. If, if you put in a culprit where one hasn't been, and you're putting water onto somebody else's property, all of a sudden, the town owns it right away, and you, you cannot put water on somebody else's property without their agreement or consent. So to me, culverts need to get a permit and need to go through the town. But plowing and grading. Plowing and basic. You know, basic spring summer maintenance, yeah. grading, shaping the road, painting the ditches. To me, that stuff just should be should just be allowed to do it. That's and I had the for some reason I had this idea in the back of my mind that we would fix anything that was more than a foot deep. That was something I was going to bring up. That's state. So since probably the policy was potentially address is now we have the municipal general roads permit which has a financial obligation that was not present prior and that that obligation is for that one foot or deeper, deeper ruts or washouts must be maintained by the town and it was for there, hydrologically connected sections was there uh or is there a start date so that ruts before this don't count nope I think we do need to take, there are class four roads that I've driven around the basin that have trees that, you know, are at least 20 inches wide. Well, and there are class four roads that are brooks. Man, if you go up away, there are bridges that don't exist anymore, anymore, anymore that are class four roads. I think we, need, we probably should do a reclassification. That is something to talk about at our next planning. Pushing in it's, <laughs> it's on completely 100%, but it's a separate question. And, Oddly enough, there was something that the, that the Planning Commission put together that I want to say came with one of these emails today about the classical rules of policy, and they had recommendation of moving on, some of the on trails. reclassification. Moving some of the trails? Uh, yeah, yeah, most of it was moving forest trails. If you move to trails, trails then you can't places. stop maintenance. It would kind of resolve some of the policy issues. Like the concerns about getting a permit or not getting a permit or allowing me, not allowing me. It wasn't any of the sections. It was yeah. what Town Highway 47, Town Highway 12, and then all the Town Highways segments that were beyond people's driveways, like points of it. Yeah, and unfortunately, I I saw that list, but I think what really would have been useful would have been why they were making the recommendations they were making. They 
said it in the meeting. Hey, Evan, this is Paul. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Didn't know you had the ability to do that, Paul. Thank you for surprising us. Yeah, well, sorry about that. Um, I'd be glad to dust off that PowerPoint and send it to you guys, because you're right. We did have recommendations for the hydrologically connected sections that might be considered to be converted back to trails. But I think whoever said the point that the class four road policy is sort of a separate issue from the hydrologically connected road, roads part. Yeah, it is. I guess what I'm saying is that should be another old business item on a future planning meeting. I don't think any board members again to go reclassification so as separate from this site. The question I have for that is does this policy allow, like, prevent any, if we're not going to reclassify at the same time as writing the policy, does this policy put us at any risk of maintenance or repair because we didn't reclassify an old road that maybe a bridge washed out? Now we have this obligation to put a bridge back. But I think an MRT you would require. Yeah, or, you know, like, like, is this the time to maybe, you know, just making sure we're doing things in the right order, so. I don't think this policy, the draft that I came up with recognizes Act 64 and the creation of the Municipal General Roads Permit. Um, it also, the past policy of the board, and I think a lot of towns, was to retain all class four highways and trails um, for recreation purposes, general access, et cetera. In my mind, that has changed because of the Municipal General Road permits, because we get zero dollars on class four roads, yep. yet we now have an obligation for maintenance. That's right. That's right. So when you're saying that has changed, meaning the thought process of holding on to that for reasons right, may not be bad. May. Yeah may certainly be influenced by other factors. Not, not, not hard and fast. Right. But you know, there may well be, and I, I'd love to see the PowerPoint, Paul, that you're referring to, because you may have thought about that in a planning context of you know what makes sense to reclassify and what doesn't. And that's that's the piece I'd love to see. It's why why you were making those Suggestion. Okay, well, it's it's fairly explicit in the PowerPoint, so I will dig it out and send it to you guys again. But that was the whole point of it, is to say, these are the sections that are hydrologically connected. Here's where it makes sense to turn it into a trail. Here's where there's a bunch of houses. It doesn't make sense for a property value standpoint, et cetera. Yeah. I don't think it actually affects property. Hey, Paul. Yeah, Mike. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for listening in. Appreciate it. You're welcome. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, while I'm thinking of it, though, we should make a note. It's hard to hear you guys when you're having your conversations. I don't dial into these very often, but as a spectator here, it's it's pretty hard to hear the various conversations. Mike, you come through just uh, fine, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> uh, is it all coming through the owl? Yeah, we, we have need a, to have some. Uh, I have an external microphone. Like we should probably put another microphone. It's called force and volume. <laughs> so, where do we? Where does the board want to go from here? Let's get that PowerPoint from Paul. That, that has nothing to do with class four road policy. That's what we're talking about. The class four road policy. Paul, oh, is no, that PowerPoint roll. about the hydraulically connected sections that the planning commission is recommending reclassifying? Your Sorry, why would you say your question again, Evan? Does that PowerPoint have anything to do that you were talking about have anything to do with a class four road policy? Uh, not specifically, no. Okay, it's, that's yeah. good. That answers Mark's question. Perfect. I don't, where do we want to go with a class four road policy? I'm fine with the changes. The one sentence that gives me a little bit of heartburn um, it's in section three, town policy, and it is, it is the policy of the town to have the road foreman survey the class four roads and trails annually to objectively determine the extent of work required. I think it's a great goal, but the word policy gives me a little bit of heartburn. 
on that. I would like to encourage that activity, but to just say it is the policy of the town. What section, where are we? Are we on section three? Section, section three, three underneath JCP feels strongly. It's the markup right here in the highlighted section right here. Highlighted section. Yeah. We just to have to in I think the word survey is probably a better choice of words. Page view. Yeah, review, review, review. Survey, yeah. survey has a connotation. And we can, and it, is there a different word for policy? It is the intent of the town, not the policy or the wish, not wish it the best. I think intent is fine. And review the class for. Yeah, survey. Inspect the class four rules. Yeah. Yeah, because you can use the word survey to inspect those. So the word that you're objecting to in that sentence is policy? You have to change that to the is the intent of the time. If the board is fine with it, I'm fine with it. It gives me a little bit of heartburn. I, I care about your heartburn. In fact, it's just a perfectly fine <laughs> word. Can we just substitute survey for yeah review or yeah. inspection inspect? Yeah. Yeah. Inspect. And that you can do it by drone. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Great. Now it's by drone. Technically you could. Yeah. You sure could. This time of year, especially. Yeah. Perfect time. So does everybody want to give this document a good thorough review and either take action on that or next board meeting or the sooner the better? I or think you want to do it right now, Mike? No, I think <laughs> I think every board member should review it one more time and we can act on it at our first meeting in May. I think we work session meeting for the first meeting. Policy or adoption, I feel, was a first contribution. Unless it doesn't fit, but I maybe we can stick with the third. I, I don't know. See, because this is a new concept. Yeah. It's an old, old concept, newly applied. I'm perfectly comfortable having, if it's on the agenda as act or adopt, I think it meets all of the definitions of agenda. In a <clears throat> can, yep. can, can we figure out whether we can fit if we can't fit, if we can fit it into the regular meeting? Yeah, let's do it. But if we can't, uh, uh, maybe because this one's more controversial, we'll fit the other policy that we're going to talk about in next meeting. Um, but yeah, we'll see it next month to act on. There's very little cleanup to this document, and we just have one minor cleanup and I'm very surprised that it hadn't been done before now. I know. But I'm going to defer to the chair uh, for us to review it one more time. Can you do an accept all changes? Send out a clean copy? Yeah. Is that with those two, two word changes that we talked about? I'm going to send it as is with the changes and then I'll clean it up and send that. Did you update the 2012? The 2012. I would love to see those. You know, that's one thing. Cash, I did. cash value. The, yeah. Well, yeah, the, the cost, the, you know, the budgeted costs, um, even the even the links of the highway may be different now. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a quick. Every, everything on the first sheet. Yeah. Any numbers. Just update update those numbers. And Paul, you did you receive a copy of my draft? I have not seen your draft, Duncan. Okay. If you sent it to me, I haven't seen it. I apologize, but I'd love to see the one Tom's working on. All right, I I sent I sent a copy to you at the town of Johnson address. Okay, I'll look so, at it there. Thank you. Yeah, you should have it. Okay. When was that, Duncan? When did I send it to you guys? Saturday, Sunday? I think it was Saturday. 
Okay. Uh, Saturday or Sunday. Okay, I'll take a look. Thanks. If you don't have it, shoot me an email. Will do. <clears throat> All right. The next item is priorities and planning meeting. And because I have talked too much and we're running behind, I'm going to lay out my thoughts on it. And the board can tell me I'm crazy or not. Gonna be honest, this is heavily derived from an email Donna sent me on potential recommendations. Um, I think we kind of break it into three lists. That was Donna's idea. I don't fully agree with the way or the, the items that she had listed out, but I like the idea a lot. That's because you never answer your emails. Because you back chair. Look at it. Plus it says eighteen um, I think one list could be a select board priorities list. It gets away from this voting and people being able to weight one thing or another, and it, it shows the priorities of the board. Another list could be attainable short term community items. Um, so we have an example. Uh, somebody says we want to build a community center. That's not a short term item. Uh, if one of the committees comes in and says that they want to go after a grant and might need some town support to put an addition on the bandstand, maybe that isn't attainable short term community. Committee, committee identify priority. So we have select board identify priorities, community and committee identify priorities. And then we have our grand coupon list of long term identified priorities. This is just my thoughts. The board can tell me I'm nuts. My thoughts melded with people that I talked to a lot. Um, Long term priorities or something, we're, this board's not going to be able to complete in a year. <clears throat> Even if it's long term vision. There's yeah, priority. We can you know. call it long term priorities and vision of Johnson in the future. That's fine. Yeah. It's, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't have an issue with trying to do that. You may not have a board. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. You know, so, so planning it, planning beyond a year in some ways doesn't amount to much. But no, but it well, creates me the board won't amount to much. I know, I know. It's just can <laughs> <laughs> You said without a year, the board will amount to much. Is that what you said? What you said. You said. It will amount to much. No, it won't. Oh, I thought you said it will amount. Uh, it creates a spot for those yeah. long term items. Yeah. You keep asking me, what about 10 years from now? Yeah. Yeah. I keep telling you, you're going to be on the planning commission next Re year. Recreation, housing, yeah. what, what are some yeah. of these goals? We, we're all of a sudden, we're going to have a lot of green space in, in the town that used to have houses. On it. And I think bridges. <laughs> bridges. Kind of shop up and over. Yeah. Well, look at these long term projects. You know, at least like establish like that. So the industrial park last year you had some goals like we're gonna hire this person to help or we're gonna do this section, like you know, at least be goal like annual goal driven, but maybe to a longer vision. So that way that's what you can commit to like section of the big big dream. Otherwise, like you might not move ahead. You know, if you're only doing one year project. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I have long, I mean, I envision this town actually having zoning sometime. You mean more based code? Yeah, something more than form based code. I know. That's sitting it's a hard, hard to believe, but you know, it's okay. We're going to become a mecca for marijuana. Today. Well, the thing is that eventually the state is going to do a statewide zoning anyway, and it won't even be up to a lot of Well, because we have no. Well, hey, yeah. gents, can I throw in a thought? Um, this may or may not help, but uh, the Planning Commission has just finished the draft of the municipal plan, and I believe you got a copy of it. Um, 
And in each of the chapters, we have recommended uh, uh, actions, and we tried to go through those recommended actions and, and categorize them into short-term, medium-term, and long-term kind of goals. And that might be some fodder for this conversation as to, you know, with the town as to what are the priorities and how to, what are the short-term, medium-term, and long-term ones. I don't know if you were in, in the meeting earlier when I... I recommended that the planning commission actually come to our, each of our committees come to a select meeting and we listen to them. Paul, oh, I don't know if I received that. Did you receive it? Yeah. So it really, you said you, you were hoping to have it to us, but I never saw the draft. Okay, I'll double check. I thought Megan Rodier from the LCPC sent it uh, to you with the announcement, but if not, I will make sure it's sent to you tomorrow. All right, thanks. That would be great. You're welcome. I almost, maybe I'm confusing this with yeah. something else, but I thought it was too big to send as an attachment. So if she sent a link where it could be viewed. Does that sound possible? No, no, that was the surveys. Uh, yeah. I think that was a survey. We should be able to send this at least without the maps. Uh, maybe with the maps that are included in the plan, it might be too big, but it's uh, it's on the town website. I, be I believe it was just posted there, but I will let me let me look into it and I'll send you all an email tonight or tomorrow. Website, I can access it. It's going to be easy to access it there. But thank you, Paul. Is everybody okay with this approach? Who would like it to be different? I'm just trying to keep us coming back to on track and here. I think it's a great idea. I think the, the question I would have is, what's the mechanics of making those visions happen? How, are we going to do post-its and you know, <laughs> stickers again this year? I hope not. No, I hope no. that's, um, you know, that, I think, I think, I see a hybrid version because during select board priorities, the select board identified priorities, which is list number one, I believe that we could discuss those. And then community identified priorities, I don't see a problem with the both. It gets it gets everybody a chance to get everything on the board really quick and we can talk about it for a little bit. I'm holding it short term and long term, and then we can talk about the vision of Johnson. We have the previous I'm not list. stuck on that approach. Yep, we have the previous list that we sent out. The previous list, and the, those that are at the top that haven't been done, I don't. Why don't we? Some of those have been around forever. Why don't we just focus on those, get those out of the way before we start adding more? Because it's a different year. No. Oh. Different, Some different of them have been different, around forever. Different, just because we've been around forever doesn't mean right. No, the priorities have been there. Certain no. priorities have been there and for a long, there. long time. And certain ones have been there since I got them on board. Yeah, well, then they should be resolved before we start finding more. Or we can't, we can't take care of those. Or they, we or, can't take care of the new ones. We or remove from the list. <laughs> or remove from the list. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of them are just <laughs> over with. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that will be each of our assignments, right? Coming up with what our expected yes. what our choice of yes. Yes. And while we're talking about it, we set this meeting for May twentieth. Correct. I don't. Huh? I don't believe we're going to have this space by May twentieth. I could be wrong. I asked Tom uh, when he has a chance. To touch base and, and see if we'll have the furniture and everybody will be out of here. No. We'll wait for the quote and come. Okay, so you already touched base. Let's put, let's put that off until this place is empty. All right, so that's you. another planned item. This One last there. interjection, if I can, Evan. Um, the first of all, the, the draft plan is on the town website. It's posted under documents. Um, secondly, the. Planning Commission will be having a public hearing on the plan on May 9th. Uh, we have a room up at the up at NVU Johnson. That might feed into this conversation of setting priorities, like you're talking about. If, if anybody comes, which you know is a crapshoot. Perfect. 
I already have that's, commitment. That's good information, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> thank, thank you. No matter what day, you have a commitment. No, no, no. just me. I would like to know the outcome of that meeting. <laughs> At the very least, if I can't make it. Uh, we have Donna taking minutes, so there'll be a full transcription. Okay. Wonderful. What time is it going to be? Uh, Lois asked what time? 6.30. And which location, Paul? Uh, it's at the um, Ellsworth Room in the library building. Okay. Yeah, where you were having to select for meetings before. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry to be chiming in. No, don't worry about it at all. We'll talk about a date uh, assigning the homework assignments probably at our next, our first meeting in May because we're going to attend that date. We might have our second planning meeting before we even have that. Because we haven't sent out any information for May 20th. No. I'm going to wait for it. Next item. Uh, we are running behind, so if we could be concise as a discussion on issues related to the town and village demarcation. Tom, um, would you like to present a little bit or discuss anything about that, or the board we can just discuss? It? Just like, uh, you know, I think, you know, town meeting happened, and it, it, there were concerns, you know, there was the uh, residents voted not to merge. But we also have not to build the plan. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I got it. <clears throat> you know, they discuss merging. They discuss mer or move forward in that direction. And they also, and then, but we also heard concerns about like, they just want to be able to know who to call, pick up the phone, and know it's got to be more clear. And I think one of the concerns that at least I've run into, I haven't talked to a single agency or a single organization that understands the town village relationship. It is very black. I mean, very correct. There's not like every single week a conversation comes up where it's like, hold on, I got to check with the village. Hold on, I'm not sure. You know, and it's, it's, and I think if we're, if we're not going to merge, then we need to at least define boundaries so that it's easy to be a resident and it's easy to do business. You know, I think one of the best examples is that clock tower that's been leaking that you can put your finger through the plywood and nobody's going to, yeah, exactly. It's a it's a fifty fifty building. We get both parties are willing to come together to to pay for it, you know. And it's like these are just like silly gray areas, you know. And it's time, you know. And I think you know there was a time when the same administrator was on both boards, and there was a liaison and a mediator, so things got done and the problem was solved. But right now we don't have that. We have a manager, a manager and an administrator. We have a board and a board. We have a municipality and a municipality, but yet we're acting like we're in the same sandbox and we're not. And it's just time to just just, just create some boundaries and just say, okay, you know, it's, it's town to town, if it's village to village. And it just makes it easy. It makes you it makes work get done faster because you know what to do, you know the next step. You know, the Swift Water Grant, I could the state is acting as if the town and the village or Swift Water Grant uh is acting as if the town and the village are the same entity. And right now we're getting our application in to move forward, but you know, I know it's going to cause hiccups and I'm going to have these conversations with, with people at the state level and say, well, we're actually different. And they're going to say, what do you mean? I literally had the question last week. What do you mean you own 50% of the building? They're not the same. I'm like, no. And they're like, well, who pays who at least? I'm like, nobody, 50% owners. And they're like, you know, it's like everyone is just like, it comes to a point when you don't have that keystone, which we, which we don't have, where we have to like make it easy for like one board to make a decision about that. So some of the things that might clean it up are maybe the town's been talking about a new website. Maybe when we do a website upgrade, maybe you have a town website and a village website and it's just clean, you know, so you don't have town policies floating in between village policies. That, you know, and that's a way you can just clean it up, you know, or the phone system press, one for village utility payments, press two for town clerk, marriage dog. But it's like, clean, you understand, you know, who you, when somebody answers the phone and says hello, you're asking a question about the idea that you meant to call. It's pretty true. And then, you know, property management is another one. Um, um, that, that idea of like, how do we create those 
a better understanding of the role of the beach board and a better understanding for the residents to know what to do when it's time to do it, you know? Just, just clean, you know? Like we our conversation we had a while back about two separate windows. When the town, uh, and there's something I couldn't remember. One yes. for the town and one for the village. So when you go downstairs. Yeah, that you go up and it's town, village. And then you go there. And then your your idea about the phone is great because every time you call the office, you don't know who you're going to get. And, well, there's so-and-so there. If you call them, you just say press one for the town clerk and press, you know, down in village we, clerk. We can still share space and expenses. Exactly. But imagine if the town owned this building and the village paid a lease at 50% of their cost of maintenance. And then when the, when, when the clock tower leaves, the town pays for it. And there's only one board saying we got to take care of our asset instead of two boards trying to figure out who's going to pay for it. As you recall, I mentioned that in the first meetings when I got back on the board. Yeah. There's ownership of this building. You know, and, and uh, so the then garages, they, the mill house, the lower storage shed. It's like then when there's a problem, you know to say, okay, hey, Eric, I, did, I this is what I heard today. Could you take care of that? And he's going to say, yeah, huh? because clearly it's his board, his problem. We're, we're just paying or lease or whatever, you know. But this building is going to be iffy because there is still a possibility that we we yeah. may actually move. It's not. So if not you not actually happen. move, yeah, then the, that should belong to the town. That would this would be the time to like to make it happen, make it clean. Then yeah. they pay us a rent or a lease or something. Exactly. We're making this stay here. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> not about like right or wrong it's just about you know i mean sue with your grant you had this like such a cool idea with this, you know with the trees and the state right away and doing the arboretum at the same time here you are like you spent how many 10 hours 20 hours of your own time to put together a good idea to be told no because of like a bureaucratic separation like that's ridiculous and i never heard back from eric Finn. well you know let's figure it out I got right. I actually texted myself today, state 111 for a minute or 1111 for a minute. So oh, don't do their work for them. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm going to push it off. They I'll, do their, their work for us. We're going to call a day of yeah. any work. For us. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, but there's an example, there's a really good example <laughs> where you would have known to actually, you would have called the grant, you know, the person, the Department of Forests and, you know, I, know, I forget, Urban Forestry or whatever, and said, hey, here's my problem. How do you suggest I write this? Do I do two grants or I do one? But it would be so clean, you would know. You know, and they would they would know how to work with two entities. And they would just be the same as a grant that crossed town lines, you know. But it would be cleaner where rather suppose than having this like, how do we solve this like difficult issue? Are we gonna lose funding because we didn't follow the rules that we didn't exist, you know? But it's never been an issue before. We've been writing grants and doing work on the village trees. And the money comes to the town and nobody has a problem until now. Well, I mean, maybe that was a bad example for the larger conversation of like black and white, but. Well, the only problem I saw was that we need a permit put in new grades and the village is supposed to arrange that. But he didn't get back to me. So I went to the state myself on the climate process. It's already in the approval process. And when he gets back to me, we'll go see Eric and we'll give him their permit. So, in a sense, I mean, me, to the cost of merging the town, I don't mind going up there to the But that's well, not, but that's that's not, not really, really the question. That's not the question. That's that's right. that, that I think it's been decided. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. postponed. Well, it's been postponed. It's, it's going to happen. We're going to have to ahead next year, I'm sure. Right. Well, it's going to happen something. Yeah. It, it just will. Yeah. So whether uh, whether whether we're still alive or not, it's okay. gonna happen. <laughs> for this item, I think this is a heavier homework item for the board for a potential joint meeting topic. Oh yeah, uh, clear demarcation uh, of responsibilities. Uh, no, I I hear the issues too. But who wasn't the set of a town meeting dates? They called. About blah blah blah, you know, they call to pay their electric bill, and then they have to get passed to this person to pass right. to this person, and people are frustrated. So we're, I think, both boards are here to serve the people. Uh, 
I am as an individual select board member and the amount of hours everybody puts in here, I would like to say that everybody is. But I think at a joint meeting, we can bring the topic up. I, I see value in a phone system. Um, press one for village tax, blah, 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 blah utility. And press two for marriage licenses, dog licenses, et cetera, whatever. I see uh, for people that are frustrated coming to the window, there's three bays there. Maybe we assign one bay to the village and one to the town, and um, people can just do their own thing. Other towns they have different doors, et cetera. I know uh, over the past couple of years, we've toyed with, and it's made it onto the priorities list. Good. Uh, I know town website, and I think a big block for that was funding on the village's side. And maybe it is time for the town to budget appropriately and just do our own town website. I don't know if that's the case, uh, but those three distinct things, I think would be serving the public better. It's up to the board to think about and talk about. We can talk about it again in future people. Right. It's going to come to more of a human rosemary retires. If there's no joint village and town clerk, yes, there will be more separation in that. You know, somebody to pay their village taxes will not be talking to the same person that they pay their town taxes to. Yeah. But that's actually a treasure, not a clerk. The village clerk does the block, clerk, the, the, the election, and right. that's it. Yeah. But the, but the, the but town the clerk is responsible for all the licenses, right? The town clerk bills for it could easily be the same person. But I think what we're going to lose is that Rosemary is a pretty special asset, and that she can do the town and the village treasurer. She used it in the school. She paid it all the can't she? Just, it is, well, can't. Village, village treasurer was quite complicated. and. You know, it's going to take, that's probably going to take, I can't, I can't imagine there's going to be somebody who wants to, that, who has a part-time ability to do, take on that role. It's probably going to take outside resources for the bill. Bill, where's the shoe? I see. Mm -hmm. Not your issue. Not your issue, but. No, it's not. You but... know, like, that's why right now, the town and village are both lucky that there's one person who can fill those four seats well, you know, mm -hmm. or to your, to your point, Mark, in two years, it's a one year, nine months. Yeah, she's got now. So here's yeah, how we're here. here. Two more meeting issues. Right, right now, we're in the process of creating a new space down there. It's an opportunity to possibly implement some of that two window concept, you know, a desk for the town in front of the town window, a desk for the, you know, there, there are some. Decisions right now that could be made. That What's could, the majority of the people that used to walk in? Utility. Was it utility, utility. Yeah. So did we offer them the closer window for ease of access? Yes. This needs to be done as quick as possible. But they're, but they're not two. There is not two separate windows. Right? There's yeah. one. There's one, but if we set, I talked to Dale. He said he could take take the one out. Put it over and put another one in. So yeah. you know, they're just pinned in. It's not. Yeah, you know. I mean it's it's a fix, but it's a, the point is, the do layout. we do that now? The layout. Yeah, yeah. I mean now is the now, time to think about the doing it. On this side, yes, but I agree. But that it's a awesome. building, so we've got to bring the trustees on board. I mean, it could be. Uh, yeah. It could be our wishes to serve public better, but I don't know if any trustee would be against. I don't know what happened at, know. at their village meeting, but I, I there are people I, at the town at the town meeting that were frustrated on not knowing who to go to. Well, I understand that, and and I'm I'm for it 100. percent But we don't want it to appear as if they're being shut out of the decision. Right. They've got to have some input, or we can just say. We've come up with this idea, and then we think it would be a whole lot cleaner, you know. And you know, so can we come up with the idea? Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got the idea. Yeah, and so just, do we want to empower Tom to talk to Eric? Yes, about, talk to Eric about having a designated village. Yeah. 
Can we do it? You bring up a good point. When stuff is moved down, there's an agreement on flow. So people are in, we're not wasting taxpayers' money on both sides again, reorganized. Yeah, and there, Take 10 and there, there may well be time. other efficiencies, like, you know, having, I, I don't know what the current configuration is, but, um, you know, having the town functions, the administrator, the community economic development coordinator and the rec person be in relative close proximity to each other in the same physical office might make sense. Um, and I don't know that that's being planned that way right now. We ought to move the town administrator into the first office if you can move the door. Rosemary wants that one. <laughs> no, she wants that to be the listers. Yeah. So, yeah. And Duncan can talk me out of it. Really? For good reason. Yeah, we don't have to get into details, but I trust him. Anyways, uh, All right. the okay. temperature of the board seems like. We're all comfortable with Tom working with Eric on um, potential flow, understanding that two windows, these two items, two red sides, and flow. Oh. Yeah, we can talk about it in, windows, in a few flow in the most immediate. But when okay. that website makes a lot of sense, they should have their own. Website. They should. We, they should. I honestly think they should have their own domain. Yeah, their they own, should. Their own domain. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. which is the email extension, right? Because you want to get a hold of me, it's Evan Pat, Evan or E dot patch or E patch. Yeah. I don't even know what my email is. I mean, like we should share this early at village. Pierce is T Hastings at townjohnson.com. And I think that domain alone causes some confusions. But there's this village of Johnson back. with larger entities of high hmm. that just trickle down, uh, especially you know, in the emergencies. People are sending me emails that they should be sending Eric Bailey. I forward them him and vice versa. Yeah. And there's no like hoarding of information. It's just I can see government agencies getting frustrated, not seeing the difference as well as taxpayers. I just had to sign a grant then because they put Eric Bailey's name on the town of Johnson's grant. Cool. For grant to me. Eric Fairley at town, the village manager at the town of Johnston .com. Mm -hmm. I think domain could go with a website conversation, but, yep. but I know websites been one that we've toyed around with for a couple of years. They should want their website. Yeah, yeah, maybe, you know, I agree with you, Mike. We should a develop a long term plan like the, the public works, you know, this building ownership. The public works 15 acres. I'm entirely in favor of subdividing the village garage and have the village own it, you know, free and clear. And they don't right. have to come to us to talk to about exactly. it. Exactly. You know, I mean, we could do the same. They've already said they don't have any money, so they're more than willing to give us the mill house. They're, but we need, to, we need, at the end of the day, it's probably going to like join village discussion, and there probably should be. One side board, one village trustee, and you two guys uh, to come up with some sort of plan that we could look at. Approved jointly. You don't think both boards should come together? You should. You think it? Uh, I mean, if it's one member from each board just coming up with a plan, they could always shoot it in the foot. But if it was fifty percent of the way there, hurting two different boards for four hours just got cut right out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, providing the rest of them go along with the deal. Hopefully, there would be some form of communication or some sort of guidance in a joint meeting saying, you know, come up with a plan for XXX and X. I'm yeah, not, I think, I'm not saying write the contract, but um, I think both boards would have to get back together in review and approve the draft plan. But, but the work of putting that draft plan together gotcha. could be. You know, to you know, a select board and trustee, and then it could take, take a lot of meeting to make. Yeah. Right. I think we've beat this one to death for this meeting, but um, I would expect it to come up again in the joint meeting. Or 
you know, even when I asked about the it's for us. I got it up there. But this furniture business has got to get done. So, yes, we do. Yeah. Nice. But at one point in time, we authorized money for the road to come up with a plan. But in that, in that instance, it was for up here because we anticipated they were going to get there for the And to actually hire somebody to do it, I think that had somebody in mind that did that to them. I don't think that. No, it didn't, it didn't happen. They, but what I'm, I'm guess I'm wondering is is it not that they probably can't do it, but somebody that I'll give you an example. Years ago, I actually hired somebody. This is the night in the kitchen, and they came with with ideas and thoughts that I never would have thought. But they, had, you know, it was a wonderful process, and then we got a great kitchen out. And it was a lot better kitchen than I would have gotten if I had decided. Um, is it is it something that's worth thinking about to hire somebody that's good at that? We actually, uh, Rosemary actually got in touch with somebody. They did a layout. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. I'll forward this to. This is kind of um, Lydia Sue. So hopefully okay. that didn't break. And then Marla's back here. Uh, yeah, we don't have to go through it. Yeah, so yes, if, I, if she did that, that's great. Who's that? That's your phone. Did you put that there? Yeah, I threw it there for you. Are we all set with the demarcation? Thank you. Yeah, so. The next item is the purchasing policy. In order to uh, move things along, my thoughts are requesting Tom to make a change to the memo. Purchase moving from one thousand dollars to three thousand dollars. Presenting it to us in a select board meeting, and we can approve it. Is that a motion? No, no, there's no motion. Tom will just take our policy, make that change, bring it back. Does the board want a different color value? We were going to talk about purchase orders. So did you get back with the wild things and cities and towns over there? No, I think that's a little, I think once we, my understanding was we wanted to do a baby step with to jump it up and then do a total. Was that right? Do an overview of the whole policy? Okay, do, I don't know if you want to do the whole policy, well, PO policy, just get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have a model policy that wouldn't take too terribly long. I think our purchasing policy is pretty much their model policy. It's that in the PO section. I yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, just had a video set. You want me to look into that? No. You said no. <laughs> that that I'm virtually certain that purchase policy. Well, it was how many years ago? Four, five years ago? Maybe they maybe they have a new draft. I don't know. But it's probably very similar to what we had. To what we had. And if we added, if we increased the dollar amount, and you know, the other thing, honestly, that I I just questioned. We have a budget, you know, Jason has a budget for the highway department. He has line items in the budget. Why can't we just authorize him to spend what he needs to spend in that line item? You know, as long as he doesn't exceed his, his budget. Yeah, as long as he doesn't exceed, you know. I hadn't thought about it. You know, yeah. one thing too that it's interesting about how Johnson handles finance. Typically, when the treasurer produces the order, it goes to like the town manager or administrator to review the orders before the board meeting. Where it's and it's not to like say no, it would be it's one stop sign. But what it means is when you have a question and you're looking at it, I know why, because I've already called Jason and said, What the hell's going on? You know, or I went to Rosemary and said, Why'd you buy that? But it was out. Right now, you get those orders, and there's nobody in the room to answer your question. They go from they get on Rosemary's desk. She's punch, she's putting numbers in boxes, and then they go on the table. She might not even know why, right? And so that having some other form of just now the seven orders, yeah, just to just to ask the questions before you guys. So then there's when you ask them, 
there's somebody who can give the answer in the one place. Right. And if we had that in place years ago, we wouldn't have had that. Right. I mean, I, I don't think I have any authority to stop it, but it at least would bring some information to, to the board. Yeah. I'm fine. You were doing them ahead of us. Do you want to do this? Do you really want to do everything? Can Great, I tell you? Greater tools that we buy? No, no boxes. What well, made it hard? <laughs> but you know, I mean, <laughs> if you want it, you know, Jason, here's your budget. Buy a greater team. I don't want to have to. Okay. The part that was so hard was this fall when we did the budget the first time. Because I didn't have that bi weekly introduction to the finances. And I wasn't looking at the orders for the first, you know, at the meeting set anyways. We were talking about the budget and I had no idea where the numbers were being derived from. And it, there was like a complete disconnect between me helping with the budget and actually understanding the, the root cause for those numbers. And so that's one th part that I think I would like about it was having a better understanding of where those, of, of what the budget is built around on the bi weekly spending. You know, you, you end up, I mean, you guys have seen the orders for the last two years mm -hmm. or whatever, but I, I I never saw them, so I never knew. But then I would ask questions, and they would be like, "Oh, so and so," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> There's like a disconnect between great, you know, being being responsible to produce the budget and not seeing the orders kind of created a disconnect. Yeah, I think I think it's a great idea. I did too. I when I was with the town of Georgia, I always reviewed. All the invoices, and I use the always edit list. That's all I would do. Really. Would never. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 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 not a huge time commitment, but it's a really good way to flag things. Um, and you know, if I saw something that looked funny, I would talk on the road for it or talk on the park, and, and you could get the question answered. You know, if somebody if you had a question at the meeting, so what's this item? I was always able to say, well, you know, I'm talking. About, I knew the answer. The other thing I would add is, is if AP is being done at 3.30 p.m. on the day of the select board meeting, there's no time to get that answer. But if AP was, say, had to be done on Friday, so the board would have to direct the treasurer to change the date of AP, then all bills before after that date are, are going in the next one. Well, next one. But, then, but then you have a weekend and a Monday to ask the foreman, to ask whoever, and, and then there is the opportunity for a stop sign because you got the question asked to say, hey, pull that check, let's wait two weeks. We have to, where you, it's harder to do that at the table in front of everybody. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just like, hey, what's going on? So yeah. what do you want from us? Well, I, as part of the purchasing policy to have something in there that AP shall be done, try, you know, to use right. the first stop yeah. as the tool to create the system. That's great. I mean, I mean, I agree. we can't require the treasurer to do anything. But you can ask her nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt, actually, I doubt actually we can. Not. Because actually. of the policy. No, treasurer's responsibility. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the treasurer's responsibility is to manage the money. It's the select board's responsibility to the yeah. uh, the invoices orders yeah, you pay you could direct her to have checks ready by a date her responsibility yeah. that you can't is to really just provide to track the funds and report on the funds and then borrow um, borrow fair enough great want to make sure what's we'll stepping up tell us she's going to be stepping up I, I, I would think at some point in the future if we I would say maybe Tom should try it. I'm going to throw an additional caveat out there. I, I, I really like and respect Tom's can-do attitude, but um, if he's going to do that as an extra item, um, he needs to manage his time really well and say no to some people when they have requests My for things, thing. like, like the thing that you did this morning with driving to Waterbury to get that. You know, that would be a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, but was, um you there, know, was, there was somebody who couldn't have her buyout notarized and they needed to get it to Johnson and it was weeks and they couldn't get it done. So I was like, all right, that's right. So on my way to work and to lot of notarized their thing to the application. So now they can be part of the program. And that's a great that's a wonderful thing. But in say. all honesty, you know, if yeah. he's if he's gonna do things like check the invoices, which I think is really important. 
you may have to say no to some people like that you know those kinds of requests that is probably that's the biggest my biggest hurdle to ever overcome in life you're too nice a guy Never go to somebody's house for lunch or something you're too nice yeah. a guy <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible that's a terrible criticism <laughs> but it's real I'm really not for heaven. I think we could beat this up. Tom, do you have clear direction? Well, change the change the low end amount. Research and include a PO section if it's easily available, and then create some kind of uh, system for financial track to that system. Or it's great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Could I ask a question? Um, Maybe. <laughs> the community groups, um, are you including them in this policy? This whole business of having to call Rosemary to buy something, it, is, it causes a lot of time and money for volunteers. Volunteers are already putting a lot of time. I think if we go with the PO system, it will yeah. be more time consuming. How so? Just call them, create a PL. You can't create a PL, you have to call back later. But if you have a creating. PL, then you can go and, and pick something up. Not yeah, that. I think I think not today, but in the future, with the same model that's being used with the highway department, if you had with better planning to say, hey, at the May 20th priority meeting, we want to do project ABC within our budget is this much money. Can we have author can we or can we spend the can we get the authorization to spend up to six thousand dollars on this project, three thousand dollars on this project from your town vendors? So that way you're ordering from town vendors, you're signing off on an invoice that, that has already been pre-approved, and then you're not exceeding your budget. And at the point that you exceed the budget, is then you just have to come back to the select what you get. Like something like that, but that's not to be put in this version policy. But that would be like a model that would work if the select board knew what you're doing. They authorized sending, the whole, and then there was checks and balances because you're having sign off from somebody other than that purchase. Yeah, but that's like that, but that's for like a larger conversation. Yeah, it's when you say town vendors, you mean town school vendors? Well, like people who are already on our S three tax exempt, who are so then then you don't have to money out of your account. You can just go pick it up, and the town gets an invoice in the mail. Right. right. I understand. Yeah. But I, I deal with um groceries that sell exotic troops and troops. Make them a the Yeah, yeah, make them a vendor. Or get a tax exemption, one yeah. tax exemption. Right. And most yeah. most companies will ask you for purchase order. When when you make an order, they they'll say do you have a PO number? That's right. Well, not them do, but not. I've never had a nursery You've never had a nursery ask for a PL number? No, it's I don't know what happens, what has happened in the past is I get two hours away at the nursery. Stand in line to go pay for it at five minutes past four. Rosemary's and I answer the phone. And then I have to go back. And that's I just I just wish I wish it was the way it used to be. I think systems can be set up in a manner to, to help that. But I think some of it is going to require like planning ahead of time so the, Rose, so the select board knows what you're going to buy ahead of time and that the S3 and town account was set up by Rosemary before you went down there. So then when you show up, they say, oh, I'm here for the town of Johnson. Oh, okay. You know, put it on the account and you're done. Just like everyone does at Johnson, you know, Farm Garden or FW Web or you know, whoever. If I'm thinking that with the PO, we might have a sheet of paper that we could have a copy of. Uh, I'm thinking of we had uniforms dry cleaned for the Historical Society. And when I <laughs> went to pick them up, Rosemary wasn't available. And I didn't have anything to show when they, so we had to call back and get, Susan had to get verified from Rosemary she could do it. We had to have these phone calls going back and forth. Whereas if I had a purchase order, 
the information would be there. It, it would have been you know, just purchase orders to me make a lot of sense. Um, I mean, I personally never minded putting my own money in and getting reimbursed, but then we were told we couldn't do that. And, you know, when I could do too, that... From, like, an auditing standpoint, there's a lot of risk for fraud for reimbursement. Because well, I Tom, understand. Tom, okay. hang on. I'm sorry, Lois. We're only talking about just purchasing order policy amendments. Um, and I really am sorry to cut you off. <laughs> I don't think any board members severely against the old policy, but I am. We're trying to get these things shorter and more to the point. But quick, we don't need to go back and forth. You you are supportive of the old policy. <laughs> Just clarifying that it's the same concept. You're talking the same kind of concept I am when you are. Yeah. Thank All you. right. Oh, you're good. Sorry, I, cut, I cut you off. No, it was, it was, it was Lois good. is nice. That's why I don't cut her off. <laughs> you just cut me off. <laughs> I tried to, I tried to cut you off when Tom was talking. Uh, <clears throat> I think we've beaten that one. CCB license. This is a generalized topic of that at the beginning of the meeting. What are the board's thoughts on authorizing a person to approve CCB licenses? Because it's as far as I know, it'll be for us to deny them. <clears throat> so do we authorize Rosemary to approve all future CCB licenses? She's yeah. the one that has the portal, right? She sends him an email, but she told me she wanted today. She told me she wanted me to be the one to I think it probably should be Tom because I think he could do it on behalf of the board. Oh, oh, correct. Yes, fair it, enough. It has to be. The select the board, which is the select right. board, is, yeah, is the CCB board. So I would entertain a motion. I would make such a motion, and I would second that. Motion. It's gone clear on that one. To yeah. authorize Duncan to approve all canvas licenses. Tom. Yeah, I like yeah, that one. I don't know. I like it with Duncan. Yeah. I like it with Duncan. Um, <laughs> to approve future CCB licenses and until revoked, or does that get us down the road until forever? I think the strategy I'm going to take is I'm going to forward you then with people one and say, if I don't hear a question within five days, I'm going to approve it. So that way you'll always have time to say, hey, I want to talk about that. Because I know it's still illegal for us to deny this. So yeah. the information is great. You're right. It's very right. Voice time. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. That's fascism. And is there a second? Yeah. Is that you? Yes. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. Do we have to do a roll call? We're in person. We're all in person. We live in a fascist land. The board just told them they have to. Go talk to the state of the world. Yeah, it's a fascist government. Yeah, it is. All right. Next item is an executive session. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session. Oh, did you get the thing about the formal request for IRC resources? That's to add it. Oh, I did in the beginning. I probably got grouped in with the SWIFT current. Sorry. Sorry. What is the request? Can the board make a motion? Thank you. Thank you. Request the state IRC um, team. Provide resources to the town of Dallas. That was for the Swift Water Grant. That's part of it, but it's actually they're going to look at every funding opportunity possible for it. Wow. And it's like, uh, it's like a, it's like this is just one, the Swift Grant is like one part of it. They're going to help us. If you tell, if you tell these guys what you want, we're going to get it here. Thank you. Bye. Sorry, Lois. See ya. Just so you know, Lois, we're trying to make the second meeting of the month a actual work session. Anything? Um, I don't know how successful we're going to be. We're going to try really hard, but well, we're trying to be out here by ten o'clock every night. By nine thirty. Well, I'm back in about fifteen minutes. One. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Um, so. So, what do you need? To, what's the motion you actually need? Is to uh to to request. Uh, the state's IRC team to provide resources to the town of Johnson. 
I made such a motion. I second that. Motion a second. Further discussion? Do you know what the motion is, Donna? Do you the motion? To request the state's IRC team to provide resources to the town of Johnson. Is, is the request to authorize not to request it or just to request it? We can said you needed the select order at Boston. Yeah, we need a, I'll just write a letter and say, hey, we made a motion to do it. Okay. Yeah. Motion and second further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? You guys have it. Uh, we have one executive session item. We have more than one, just one. I don't. There may be potential action coming out of it, but if there is, we'll let you know what it is. Okay. I would make a motion to enter executive session for attorney client communications as per 1 VSA 313 A1F. Motion a second for the discussion. I believe, does your motion include inviting to call? It does. Second, second there's okay with that? Sure. All right. Further discussion? If none, all those in favor single five by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The board's entering executive session at 9.01. <laughs>